Hello, good evening, everyone. How are we doing this very wonderful evening? Uh, you're welcome to another episode of the Start of Compliance series. It's been a hot minute, guys, and I'm very, very excited to be here. Uh, we are started, so um, it's so good to have everyone. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon from wherever you're joining in everywhere. Um, I, we have viewers from almost <laughs> every continent, so it's so good to have everyone here. I just want to say a very big thank you, a very big welcome to everyone. So um, if you're watching this stream, if you are here live, make sure that you're sharing the links. Um, you're sharing the links with your colleagues. You're sharing the links with your people. You're sharing the links with your audience. It's going to be very, very, very interesting conversation. And I'm definitely looking forward to doing this with everyone. Um, I'm sincerely hoping that we are live. So just to confirm, yes, I can see Joseph from, from Instagram. I can see uh, from LinkedIn rather. So it's good to be here. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Can you hear me? All right, fantastic. So if you're here, please tell us your name. Tell us where you're joining us from. Tell us what you do. Network with someone. Uh, we've had very interesting episodes where we've had people who got connected on the live stream and then they ended up doing business together. It was really incredible. So um, let me just give you a very short introduction. My name is Rosemond uh, Phil Thiwa, and I am a corporate commercial attorney and I am also a startup advisor. I do a lot of um, consulting for startup companies and I currently I work uh, with Google, it's um, Startup Accelerator Program as a mentor, and it's been an incredible journey. I can see Abimo from YouTube. Thank you so much for joining. So I know a lot of people are joining, some of us are joining from Twitter. So thank you so much, and please introduce yourself. Good evening, good evening. It's so good to have you here. All right, fantastic. So we're gonna go straight to the session. Um, so um, just a brief background about the series. So this is called the Startup Compliance Series, which was basically launched this year. Um, and the goal and the purpose of this series was to educate startup founders about several murky areas when it comes to legal regulations, compliance, corporate governance, taxes, whatever it is that you are definitely uh, struggling with from a legal perspective as a founder and as a business owner. And just just answer some very pressing questions. And this series literally has led to a lot of changes and the feedback has been really, really amazing. Um, if you notice, we didn't do this series for about uh, three months, a quarter, because uh, we did take some time to really take stock of the traction and then, of course, do more physical events, which we did. We did one in July. We had another one. And we currently have a community of people who are very passionate about the startup compliance space. So it's been an incredible privilege. And I'm so happy that we are having and launching this series with such an amazing personality who I'll be introducing very shortly. So um, the discussion for today is, of course, this is episode 11. And if you need to catch up with all the series we've possibly had, just check the hashtag Startup Compliance Series. Check it on YouTube, check it on LinkedIn. You will definitely see all the episodes that we've possibly had. Um, OK, so I just want to, so if you can hear me, can you just sing? OK, all right, awesome. So I'm going to be using this opportunity to introduce um, our speaker. We're going to be talking about artificial intelligence which has been a very interesting topic for a while uh, but we are coming with a twist um demystifying artificial intelligence for startups a legal guide and there is honestly i looked through my network there was absolutely no other person who definitely i trusted enough <laughs> to take this topic than who i'm about to bring right now because he's an incredible voice he's a dear friend he's a brother and he's a colleague, he's my boss, <laughs> the man I'm speaking. Uh, he goes none other by the name Fernandez. Um, and he's been an amazing person. So please, I want to do the honors to read his profile before I bring him up. He's here and I'm sure he's very eager to join us. Uh, Fernandez, I call him Marcus. <laughs> Fernandez is a legal and technology practitioner and policy and reform advocate. Uh, prior to his appointments, his most recent appointments as a special assistant to the president of Nigeria on justice sector reform and ICT slash digital innovative technologies. He was a partner at SEDAC Attorneys, a Tony Elumelu Foundation alumnus and co-founder of a legal tech startup, wecreate.com. 
as well as a principal member of the Lawyers in Technology Initiative. Fernandez is a member of the Strategy, Operations, and Management Group of the Justice and Commerce Network, GICN. Is an author and, of course, the authors of the administration of the Civil Justice Bill recently passed in Delta Nikiti State and currently at different stages of enactment in various states, including Lagos. His core competencies slash interests are technology and emerging trends, data protection and privacy, AI for law and law for AI, gamification of law, intellectual property, startup advisory, robotic governance, Web3 and the metaverse project and resolving disputes in all these areas. Amazing. Fernandez has an LLM in legal technology and he strives to make an impact at the intersection of law and technology. Ladies and gentlemen, with your rousing virtual clap, <laughs> can you please make to the stage Fernandez Marcos APN? It's so exciting having you here. So just reading your profile, I'm like, and you see why there was no other person that could definitely like come on the stage, right? And because we have so many people, I'm really happy. To have you here your excellency <laughs> so good to hear to say <laughs> that right so <laughs> thank you so much for being here and um you're welcome thank you for taking the time uh to to definitely join us on this episode and it's such an incredible one so i'm going to just shoot straight to it right we have literally an hour an hour 10 15 minutes to get this out of the road first of all thank you for taking the time to be here after all the planning <laughs> so thank you for actually you know being here so um fernandez <laughs> you you're doing amazing stuff that. yeah you're doing amazing stuff in space reading your articles looking at the work you've done it's i love how you know i think whenever i read your post i'm like ah, where do you get this information from? Because these are some things that cannot even be found on Google, right? So I really love the how deep your 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 writings are because they come from a place of, of course, you can tell that a lot of research work went into. So please walk us through your journey um, in just a very short time. How did you get here? Because they say lawyers are the most archaic people on earth sometimes because we, it's hard for us to catch up but yeah, i seen a lawyer in the web three in digital in ai i'm like come on fam there has to be a story behind this so please share with us let's know about your journey a little bit and definitely we can move straight up to the questions and of course we can kick off from there thank you okay okay thank you first of all thank you rosemont for having me i've been um, i've been looking forward to this event for forever um at some point i thought it wasn't going to happen um, so thank you, and um, my regards to everybody who's joined. Um, thank you for joining. Um, it's a good thing that you think I have some things to drop. Uh, as for my story, well, um, how do I say this? Um, I told Rosemont that I was going to say I'm a lazy Nigerian youth, but I won't say it. <laughs> I'm hardworking Nigerian youth, on the other hand. But um, what uh, I've been, I think, growing up, I already liked the arts. I already like arts. And then at some point in the university, when I needed money, I did graphic design and web design. So when I became a lawyer, um, I thought about it after a while. I listened to a few podcasts and all, and I decided, okay, you know what? I know tech, and now I know law. So this is where I'm going to make my name. I'm going to become, I'm going to do mix both uh, law and tech. And that's really how it all started. Uh, but I didn't really know how to do it at the time. I didn't even know there was something like technology, but it was, uh, I think, a basic daughter. That introduced me to oh there's something like technology law and so from there it became uh this thing. of course there have been challenges uh, i'm not going to say them today because we don't have time but uh maybe if you check my linkedin for once in a while you might see something that relates to it thank you very much i hope i'm audible all right so yeah that's me that's my story that's how i started uh, it's a very time. short story <laughs> <laughs> yes yes there are lots of it that would probably make some people cry but i think actually they should go and check on my linkedin for that one i i, I love it i love it <laughs> all right so i'm going to go straight to the questions right um if you look at what has been happening currently like in the artificial intelligence space um it's almost as if there was there was just one light that just shone on the industry this year coming from the fact that we had that open ai launch we talked about the fact that there's been a lot of changes a lot of businesses now are integrating um, ai into their operations into their services um let's not even talk about the fact that you now realize that you know a lot of people are now becoming a little bit more sufficient or they are trying to you know rely more on these tools for business 
and you know um i i there's a i don't know there are some certain myths that people have and i'm really really wanting us to talk about it because a lot of people fear what they don't understand and so um as lawyers especially as technology lawyers as lawyers who are playing in the technology space because we're literally having startups as a possibly we have lawyers in this conversation and listening in who have you know businesses that are integrating artificial intelligence into their work or are planning to or are building portfolios in that space right can you tell us um what has been the changes that we've seen um from the past couple of years artificial intelligence has, did not start today it didn't start this year it didn't start 2020 it's, it's, it's been for a while but what are some yeah. of the changes that you have seen that has led us to where we are now globally uh, when it comes to how we've been able to sufficiently integrate artificial intelligence into our everyday work, business, life, school, whatever it is. So can you share some insights with us? It'd be great to know where we are coming from so that we can actually appreciate, you know, where we are going. Yeah, it'd be great to have okay. that. Yeah. Okay, it's all right. So um, several years ago, when you turned on your Microsoft Word, there was this pin thing that would come on, you know, this thing that looked like a pin that had eyes, you know, and that was what we thought was AI. Um, I mean, I mean, it was to some extent because it, it signified that there was some level of artificial intelligence that was being used. So, but even before that, artificial intelligence has started. Um, sorry, had started. What we have seen in the last few years, I mean, even before the uh, generative AI, which the show, the star of the show is uh, ChatGPT. But even before that, we've had a few others. Who very, you know, we've had self-driving cars. Tesla and his self-driving cars. We've had the most simple ones, Google doing, uh, being able to target the marketing using information that they've gotten. And we've had, you know, when you open your Netflix, for example, um, you're able to be able to tailor your, what do you call it now? Tailor your, the kind of movies you see and the kind of things you see based on your personal preferences, uh, your music folders. We've had all of this. But what we're seeing now is we're moving, I mean, an inch further into uh, what we call AGI, um, artificial general intelligence. Essentially, it's... Um, artificial intelligence that's up to the human level that's able to do all of what humans are doing. And I think that's what the war is now. I mean, behind the what we have the chat GPT and behind the uh, Grok and um, Anthropic and all the other ones, that's essentially where we're going to a situation where we have artificial intelligence which is able to do everything that a human can and will do. Um, chat GPT essentially just opened everybody's eyes to what it is today but beyond chat gpt if you're using your google for example your microsoft word for example you're able to translate at automatically without having to just you open your microsoft Word, upload the document and you're able to translate that document you're able to do changes um a while ago my brother when he was doing his uh, undergraduate studies at some point but he had to stop anyway but he was using a uh, quill box you know you put a text and then it changed the text changed the text to something else but similar um, and they'll be using those for a while. So yes, um, that's really is we're coming from a place where we're, it, we're essentially it's basic from basic to advanced now. We're closer than ever to getting AGI. I'm a bit scared about <laughs> that to be fair. Uh, for law practice, we may start to see in the near future that technology is able to relate with, uh, I mean, now we're able to do it. Somebody can, if you have a website now, you can impute, for example, your own version of ChatGPT on it and with the information you have and so your client to simply just go there and ask questions and then he can respond he can uh, we're, we're moving to a stage where it, on the guy on the street can simply just have something we present him take information pass it on uh, review the information pass it on to you and even give responses to people i fear that even those of us who are lawyers i fear that some of our work will be i mean some has already been taken but some will some have already been taken right now and more will be taken in the next few days. I don't want to go as far as saying those things because I said them in Asaba and a lot of people were not happy. So I'm going to leave it. So Rosemond, I hope I've answered your question in some way or form. Uh yeah, very short, but I think it's insightful because like you said, it's not it didn't start today. So I do remember I'm part of the generation where we had that pain. Possibly Gen Z's mm -hmm. may not relate or they may have related mm -hmm. at a very young age, but you know, it's always been there and we've gone past the the like you mentioned so there are different types right i know that from some yes. of the um, little research that I, I have you know there's the automated there's the generative and there's some of these things yes. that happen as a result of uh, machine learning you know yes. so it's gone beyond just making them operational but they are able to use big data to generate yes. enough information 
that can answer enough questions that are imputed. So the, it's beyond just it, you know, solving a problem. It's learning a series of patterns that, you know, um, can be put in algorithms and then can actually solve problems based on predefined data. Right. Okay, thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosemond. I actually, actually, uh, I actually forgot something. Thank you for reminding me. So, all right. There's now this um, self-driving plane. Um, it's in the U.S. Essentially, the plane drives itself. Um, but the law in the U.S. requires at least one pilot to be on board. Um, I forgot the name of the startup. But essentially, the plane, what it has done is over several years, it has some. You know, it's been gathering data on the seas. It's, it's better able to join other planes. Better able to communicate. So the driver for now, what they're, they're using it for cargo airlines. The hope is that in the future it will be used for human flight, so you don't need a pilot anymore to ride um, anymore. Uh, they've been collecting data, like she, Ayaki, I've said, they've collected a lot of data, which enables them to, the computer, to be able to make a decision as to whether there is bad weather, what you should do in this kind of situation, should, should you turn. As of today, as I speak today, the planes are actually flying in the air on their own. It's just that we have a pilot there who doesn't do anything. I mean, we already have the autopilot, the regular autopilot, which is where they essentially where the flight gets in, you know, the pilot doesn't do anything. But this is even more. From the time it starts taxiing to the time it lands and gets to the hangar, there's no need for a human being to touch anything. The human being is simply just there because the law says he should be there. Um, and it's getting better and better. I just thought to add that. Yes, exactly, right? Because you can't have you can't have systems or machine learning systems that are able to self-learn because you know without relying on data and that even takes me to my next question right because you know we are talking about you know how this really interfaces with legal because you know like i said there seems to be a huge gap between regulators and innovators it's like there's always a constant battle <laughs> the, the the innovators want to move the regulators are like do it this way do it this way you know, what are your thoughts? Do you think that regulations stifle innovation? And I want you to speak from your experience in the space. Um, what are some things that can give practitioners hope that, look, it's not all doom and gloom. There are some innovations that are also happening in the legal space from a tech point of view. So can you give us some examples as to that so that we can have some insights as to whether, you know, that quote is true? Whether regulations stifle innovation from you know a technology perspective, it would be great to have those thoughts and you know, share with us. Yeah. Thank you. Interestingly, this was one of the articles I did when I was uh, when I was in my LLM in legal tech. Whether um, regulation, so whether regulation stifles uh, technology. So the starting point is, as you said, technology is always ahead of regulation. So uh, regulation is always struggling to catch up, uh, and when regulation is eventually made sometimes we tend to over regulate you know we tend to say certain things and um but I, and, and to some extent regulation can actually stifle once you over regulate you can actually stifle the growth so for example i give an example something that um you might have spent you might spend maybe one hundred thousand or two hundred thousand or two million or five million whatever it is the amount to develop because you need to comply with certain uh, regulatory requirements you may need to spend a lot more um, so, for example, you need to have a, uh, what do you call it now, a compliance officer. You need to, you know, meet certain, um, if you're working in the finance industry, you have to get a certain quota of uh, your money with the CBN. You have to have certain, you know, lots of regulations. So those things tend to, to some extent, stifle. And I don't want to say stifle, but I think reduce the pace of regulation. So this makes this assurance that it's only those who have quite a lot of money, who have access to quite a lot of resources that are able to develop the technology that we need. But on the other hand, it's not so bad because um, if you don't regulate technology, I mean, these people that create technology, they're not really, they're, they're engineers. Okay, they're, they're looking to create very, you know, innovative products on the go. And so because they're looking to create those, it's possible for them to overlook, it's even likely rather that they overlook um, some of the safety requirements for these things. And so when they overlook these things, it can cause harm. And, you know, the thing about technology is, so if before, if before, if I say something wrong to you, it just affects you. Right. But now if I say something wrong, it can affect millions of people. And so if, if you are going to have that much impact, there's a need for us to regulate you. So it's always a chicken and egg kind of thing, which should come first and how much you know should come. But the thing is there's need for regulation and there's need for innovation. But we just have I don't think there's really a balance. We're always going to be catching up, we're always going to make mistakes. What we should do is create is to create a situation where when mistakes are made, we're able to backtrack and make changes almost immediately. Um I can imagine that I'm developing an app that maybe I have only 300,000, uh, maybe 300,000 naira, not dollars now. 
and I'm thinking I want to develop an app, and I realize that I violate some data. Uh, maybe I, I send my data, my data is hosted in China, and because of that, there is some issue with it is not a safe zone. So because of that, I now get fined how many million dollars, for example. You know, that essentially brings down my business. So the next time I want to do a business, I'm thinking, apart from meeting with the regulatory requirement, I'm also thinking of how will I be able to make sure that those fines, uh, first of all, to avoid the fines, but then if they come, how will I survive despite the fines? So yes, it's a chicken and egg kind of situation. Let's even look at Nigeria, for example, right? Um, let's look at the advent of crypto, the way the government just jumped into the space. Uh, we look at issues as regards, in fact, there are some very funny quotes that I have seen on some platforms as to some leaders, you know, talking about how it's affecting this, it's affecting that, that people are using. I saw a very funny video of somebody who was graduating and he was thanking, he was thanking <laughs> Jaji for making him succeed. I'm just like, God, you know, there's just a lot, like, you know, like you said, there seems to always be that um, that that clash, but I think that it's important to realize that it has come to stay. Um, I was walking through a particular bookstore um, on the streets of Berlin, and I, I came across um, an article that was written by um, the CTO of um, OpenAI, uh, the lady, uh, Mirati, I think that's her name, and it was an interview yes. with her, and there was something that she said that look what we are doing is just simply making this thing really available to the masses it has always been there and there's really no stopping right and the point is this it will keep evolving um yeah. i think most of your most of the articles that i've seen you write about has been the changes that are rapidly happening right from the very first version of the gpt to now where you have bar you have it integrated with video we have it integrated with pictures there's just a lot yeah. so if we as and I'm speaking from where I sit right now in Lagos, Nigeria, is the fact that our regulators really need to realize that you cannot ban everything. You cannot overregulate sometimes, but you can control. And that is why we have these organizations that are coming up. I'm happy that we have the new startup portal, which was launched, I think that was this week, right? So we are seeing a lot of changes happening in the space, and it's just a very good thing. But we must understand that as users, as founders, let's realize that as we are innovating, Let's also realize that we are innovating in an environment, solving a problem for people who live in a space that are regulated by government, that are regulated by law. So that balance always has to be there. Um, that takes me to my next question. Uh, what are some of the legal considerations um, that startup founders, because like I said, this is for founders and this is for people who are builders in a manner of speaking. So yes. what legal considerations should startup really keep in mind when they are developing AI-driven solutions, right? Um, yes. Please make mention as to issues as to IP, data privacy and security. Just walk us through the legal shenanigans of building AI-driven products and what founders and builders really need to be aware of that they usually don't pay attention to. That would be great. Thank you. So, yes. So, uh, thank you very much, Rosemont. Um, in answering this question, I think a lot of people will think that uh, there's one law that you go to that will help you solve all the, you know, that you would comply with that law and that saves the problem. But the reality is that, I mean, say from in the EU, that they have the AI Act, which is being implemented, uh, although there are still some other laws that need to be uh, looked at, that need to be looked at too. But then if you're in Nigeria, for example, or anywhere else in the world, there are a number of areas that one has to uh, comply with. That's the first of all, the issue of data, pri data privacy, <clears throat> data and privacy, data, um, you don't want to give out personal information. You want to be sure that you comply with the uh, data. This thing, if you're using 1,500, if, uh, if you have those number of customers that you're dealing with the personal data, you have to comply with the requirements of. In fact, once you're dealing with anybody's personal data, really, you have to comply with the requirements of the Data uh, Data Protection Act and the Data Protection Regulation, the Nigerian Data Protection Regulation. I say a combination of both because. Um, in cases where something is not covered by the Act, the regulation itself follows. Of course, if you're in the EU, uh, the GDPR, uh, there's the one for the US, but I, I think I'll just focus mostly on the Nigerian ones. Um, the NDPR, the NDPA, and generally you have to make sure that you, fall, you do your things within that requirement, how you transmit your data, who you are transmitting the data to, how you store the data, uh, the security architecture, ETC, and then once there's a breach, what steps are you to take? Uh, the NDPA sort of covers that area. And there's also the issue of intellectual property. You're putting in something that belongs to somebody. First of all, how did the AI, the information that the AI is using, how was he obtained? And what rights or licenses does the person have to use that? So I recently, OpenAI indicated that anybody who is sued 
for copyright violation on the basis of uh, use of um, AI, of their AI, um, they're going to take uh, bear the legal cost of that. But whether that is enforceable or not, I don't know. But it's a statement. I didn't see the written document. Um, that I didn't sign a written document or accept a written document. But yes, there are certain things. So it may well be that you're taking another person's data and imputing it in it. If you're doing so, um, a painting, or if you're looking at, you're trying to upload a painting, you have to consider, do I have a right to use those? And if I do have a right, to what extent do I have that right? There are also issue of, issues of contract. <coughs> um, <coughs> there are also issues of contract. Um, whenever you want to use your, uh, any of the, any, almost anything nowadays, you know, you have terms and conditions, and those terms and conditions essentially are a contract that bind you and the company that tells you this is my right, this is your right, this is what I will do. Do you consent? And so, if you don't review those and you're working, you realize that you're essentially just—I mean, half the time there's nothing you can do about it. If not, you won't use it. Uh, but it, what you really have to know because that constitutes some sort of law by that uh, binds both of you. There are also issues of torts. Um, negligence, defamation, etc. You know, if you put in data that's wrong, um, if you use data for the wrong purpose, if you, you know, those things are things that you should be worried about. There are issues of who become liable, whether it's the maker of the artificial intelligence device that we're using, or whether it's you that did not use it appropriately or did not exercise a relevant amount of caution, or is a third party who's who use the information wrongly. Um, there are also issues of cyber crime, cyber crime retaliation. I mean, those ones are essentially uh, criminal. So you have laws that says you can't do this with technology, you can't hack into this system, you can't impute certain data, etc. So those are essentially the, the primary legal considerations that you have to go through if you want to deal with AI. Uh, do you are you able to put your well, clients that's, data? That, 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 yeah. No, no, please, please, no, please, please go ahead. Thank you. I mean, please go ahead. It's fine. Okay, okay. there's a lot yeah. that I was. Ah, no, please. I, I have a feeling that you're going to go back first. You are, you are going to you are going to pick at least one because you know, you know, it's you say these things and it goes a lot, it goes over a lot of founders' heads. Because yes, everybody now is trying to awaken to the issue of data privacy. Yes, fine. We have an act now, not just a regulation. We have an act now that basically talks about how the importance it is, how important it is for you to have, you know, a data compliance officer and then of course whenever you're doing your data compliance audit you need to have a dpco to be honest the typical founder in a room they want to build launch and scale and blue yes. right so yes. the, so so i think we really need to as legal practitioners right we really need to emphasize on these things because we have the regulators we have the regulations but there is no the, the education is not sufficient right we don't mm -hmm. have a lot of public sector driven educational initiatives for founders that are targeted solely on legal stuff so that is why i really want to you know just give some more details so one of the things that you mentioned that really caught my attention right you talked about how you talk about who is responsible for when a breach happens what's your security risk processing what's your procedure when it comes to reporting risk if you issues as regards cyber security and fraud Look, let, let, let's let's break it down now. Let's level up plenty grammar now. You said this issue about deep fake, yes. where you have people, as in, when I, I literally, I, I think I went down the rabbit hole, right? And I wanted to get into some certain things when it came to understanding what that the technology that powers deep fake. And I'm like, you can literally, in, okay, so typical example, when there was an issue of the removal of, um, Sam Altman, and of course, we already know that he's trying to be reinstated back and all that. Happened in 48 hours, weird, craziest stuff I've ever seen, <laughs> right? And there was a video that someone did. I don't know if the video trended, I don't know if it did, but there was a clip from this movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, right? And in that clip, there was a conversation about being reinstated back, we are not going, blah, blah, blah. Every single character in that movie that has already been out, his face was implanted there. That's an example of deep fake, right? Because it looks like these are their actions, but they are not. And you've talked about cybersecurity, you've talked about fraud. Like people can literally impersonate people, they can impersonate voices, right? Yes. And they can do things that are beyond, and you will think it's true because that's so where is the balance, right? Um, that is why I said I need you to really look at help us understand the importance of legal compliance when it comes to implementing 
these AI driven tools in the services that they provide. Possibly you could share an example or two, or possibly something that you read somewhere that can really show us how important it is so that whenever we are building these things, we remember and say, oh yes, I watched this and this was what was paid attention to. You've said it very fast, but maybe you can take one or two examples and sort of like go deeper on it so that you know we can really understand the importance. It's not just to innovate and run, right? So okay. please. Okay. Okay, so um, I think I will just start from the basics, and I will not I will not go as deep as um, I would ordinarily have if they are if, I, if we are paying clients. Anybody wanted to go to pay for, pay for consultation? Uh, yeah. So, for example, if you are using people's data, um, you only take the data that you need that you absolutely need. If you don't need any additional data, you wouldn't request for it. If you take it, you are violating. If you request or use it, you are violating the uh, Data Protection Act. You know you must have <clears throat> you must have a data protection officer you must do your annual audit uh, independent annual audit every year you must do trainings you know that's the uh, statutory requirement if you don't do that then you're not compliant and uh, well you'll be liable for uh, different legal actions and different sanctions that's one um about so about the defects the serious issue so that there, there's a story of something that happened one of the african uh, african union chiefs Recently, some people initiated communications with the leaders of Europe. And what had happened was they are taking his voice, they are taking his uh, information, uh, they are taking his voice, they are taking his physical appearance. And so I can be sitting down in front of a screen with this camera and I am, what you are seeing as your video calling me is Rosemond. So what you're seeing is Rosemond. And so because you're seeing Rosemond, um, anything I say, you're seeing and hearing Rosemond. Anything I say, you hear as Rosemond saying it. What that means is that Rosemond can tell you, please, I'm in danger. I need $500 million. You know, whatever it is that she needs, and you're able to provide, they are giving her that on the trust that it's happening. And that's what happened with the EU um, chief and the European uh, leaders. Um, fortunately, at that time, the people were not looking to get money, or maybe they got additional information. Um, but the thing is, you have to ensure that you have adequate and at the, on a personal level and at the level of an institution, you have to ensure that you're not giving out information relating to third parties. So for starters, uh, things like, so for example, you are in front of a, your house, for example, you snap, somebody can see your home address, you know, um, you drop your credit card on the, this thing, you know, you're taking a, a selfie, your credit card is on the table, you have picked up that information, today is your birthday, it's on Twitter. Or this thing, you have taken your date of birth. Um, you know, you write about something about your school. They've captured that information about your school. You write about your whatever, and they've captured all that information. So now they have your credit card, your credit or debit card data. They have your date of birth. They know you are male or female. They know your mother's name. They know your home address. They know all those information. So they simply just aggregate that, put that together. They can use your credit card, uh, do transactions online, and you just notice that you have been charged several... Uh, well, even charged money for transactions that you don't know. So on a personal and community level, and society, personal organization and community level, we have to ensure that we're, uh, we're, we're avoiding certain things. You don't want to take a picture that shows your house, at least the outside of your house, because people can see it and use it to take actions. And then if you're putting stuff out there on social media, um, be careful. Uh, for the, what's the name, for the company owner, you want to be able to, you want to have asked for permission. And then you're also only using what you need from the person. Because if you go ahead and use my picture, I will sue you if I don't mean it to be there. Um, there's a situation where two people went on a date, a young lady and a married man. I mean, it wasn't a serious anything. They just went and they were having a business date. But uh, because of the place they went to, they took a picture and posted them on Instagram as love couple. You know, that caused a bit of an issue with the family of the people, of the, with, the woman's, uh, with the man's wife and then the family of the girl. And then, of course, legal action was taken and apologies were made and all that. So you want to prevent all those kinds of situations. You're going to take photographs of people in your institution. You have to request. Yeah, sometimes people have gone as far as if you are, if you are okay to uh, receive a, to, sorry, to take, for us to take a photograph of you, put on a pink ribbon or put on a yellow ribbon. The ribbon is there. So if you know, if you don't like it, you put on this. So as you are going in, you know, you have gotten consent from them to do those things. And these are very important. Then as for cyber bullying, I know that cyber uh, terrorism, cyber bullying, cyber crime generally, I know that we need information, we need to get information. So sometimes you may need to, you know, we want to go through, I mean, buy data, for example. I know a lot of people who go around and buy data. 
you have to first question, does the person who is sending you that data have the right to sell you that data? Does he have the right to collect the data in the first place? If he doesn't, he'll be violating uh, both Cyber Crimes Act and the Data Protection Act. Um, and then, okay, he has given you data. What is the nature of the rights that he has? Does he have that a right to sell? Uh, the people consent to use their data for certain things, etc. And so those things are very important things that we should take into consideration when using um, artificial intelligence, sorry, data for the use of artificial intelligence. Also, you also have to be careful when you're, if you're a creator, you are creating um, artificial intelligence solutions. You also have to be careful to ensure that you have adequate security measures so that nobody is able to hack into your system. And then if they're able to, you're able to escalate it as fast as possible. Law requires that you escalate to the people who are information and then the uh, regulator, you have to make sure you escalate it as fast as possible. You have to make sure that uh, adequate security measures are uh, this thing. Yeah, in some cases, you may need to anonymize the data to allow to be able to use it for certain purposes. So you have to ensure that you have gone through that entire compliance series. It's not just enough to know it and have the skill. You have to actually implement it and get the right people to do the job for you. Uh, Rosemont, have I answered your question? Yes, you have. Don't worry. I'm not going to stretch it further. Anybody that has heard this already knows that you have sort of covered the field. So those are very key things. At least, you know, getting people to really understand this point, right? So I'm happy that you actually went deeper. Thank you very much. We have like two more questions before we move to, you know, um, questions from the audience. And, and then, of course, we, we, we round off, right? And it piggybacks off this. Um, can you let us know what are some of the things that are currently in the pipeline? Share with us some current trends that we are seeing now um especially when it comes to some of the services that are available i know that we touched on it at the beginning um you know what what are some of the you know like changes that have happened now because one of the things that i like i said and i said at the beginning is that whenever you talk about some of these things you 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 literally talk about some of these updates that we are seeing right so what are some of the, the changes that you we've seen ai come to do when it comes to you know service delivery for um, startup companies and you know maybe possibly you could also talk about some futuristic trends that you also see coming so that you know we can prepare there's something i always say to founders i say the beautiful the dna of a founder or of a good founder is the ability to innovate into the future there's no point innovating something that you can reinventing the wheel is not necessary um we always want to have a deeper or a better version of something so people are able to see where things are going and innovate in that direction are the people who usually make it i'll give a typical example i currently work with google at the moment in a ca certain capacity on that um, funding accelerator program and just last month i think it was september uh, google funded about 11 ai driven state startups that were actively using ai to solve problems in health in agriculture um in in business in e-commerce i think there are about 11 of them that were selected and they are going to be funded definitely right so everybody's looking in that direction so maybe possibly from your insights and some of the changes that you are seeing in the space maybe you could share with us some things that some trends you've noticed some patterns and you know what should the future or the founder who is thinking of you know doing something different using ai what are the things that they can start considering yeah okay uh Funny thing, uh, um, a couple of years ago, uh, when I was doing my, when I finished my, when I, my LLM required that we do sort of like a project, a, a technology project. And so my technology project at the time was a, a chatbot that was able to, you know, create documents, you know, and deal with certain things, you know, send it preset data and is able to do that. Um, after I finished, I started, you know, putting things together uh, to look for funding, and then uh, uh, ChatGPT came. So when ChatGPT came, I realized that I couldn't do what I wanted to do at the time anymore, because um, I cannot be using my preset data when there's generated AI, when certain things can learn from what I, from the document and create new documents that are fresh. I don't even have to have the same words. So uh, that became a problem, and then we had to go back and work on some things. But yes, that's essentially that essentially tells you the way technology is and how it's moving. Um, for current trends now, I mean, we're having uh, there's the Grok, the funny version of uh, this already Elon Musk version of ChatGPT, which I, by the way should also be introduced on Twitter. Um, essentially, that you can communicate. Um, then there's uh, the the most interesting one I think in the last few weeks is the Humane. 
So it's sort of like a cheap, a, a something you put on your clothes, and then it's able to, you can ask it for different things. You can have, ask it to translate. You can ask it to take a picture if you need to take a picture. You can ask it to do essentially all the things you do with your phone and ChatGPT. You can speak to it and get responses. If you want to play music, you tap it simply and tell it all. You know, you want to check the weather, you can check the weather. You want to see, you're looking for direction, be able to see. So it's essentially an all-in-one. It was formed by two uh, like former Apple uh, employees that were using it now for that. Uh, sorry, people that are working in Apple and then they decide to create. So even the design itself is similar to the kind of uh, Apple product, but it has a lot more features and functionality. So it's spelled H-U-M-A-N-E. I think it's about 600 and something dollars now, but I'm sure it will come down very soon in the video. Uh, very soon in the future now for those of us who are already doing um so chat gpt sort of created um gpts which enable you to sort of create your own third party gpt you see chat gpt uh, but before even before then there are still a lot of startups that were already piggybacking on chat gpt on uh, the gpt technology so to form different ones so for example now you want to build um you have a law firm Oh, no, but before before I even go further, I think I just want to sound a note of caution before I go further. Um, if, and apologies for drawing us back. So if you're using your chat GPT for a company and you're using it for people's data, you want to ensure that because what chat GPT ordinarily does is when you impute data, it learns from that data, improves, and helps provide more data. So you might put in personal data into that uh into chat gpt and then it turns out that another person will now gain access to it because he has used based on you know his own thinking level i don't want to say thinking but calculating level that this is the proper answer to the question and so that answer can turn out to be to go to everybody else in the world so one of the things you can do a quick fix is if you check your chat gpt app you know the chat gpt or your, your browser on your phone if you select your name that place where your name is at the bottom and then select settings so once you open your settings and you go to the general, you will see an option to that says the ChatGPT should not save your data and should not use it for training. So if you're able to on, if you uncheck that, that means that I mean anyway we don't know the architecture, but the the, the implication of that, as if from a uh, front view point, is that ChatGPT no longer uses your data to train itself, which means that you have some level of privacy that works with it um and that being said i'm going back to the things that we're seeing so for now things like i mean i like to look at the very basic things i don't even like to go too far because i think that these are people that are already seeing it you have your um microsoft word for example and you need to okay yeah, you have your microsoft word for example and you need to summarize or create a document or you're having a conversation you need it transcribed microsoft is developing consistently different plugins different add-ons that you can use to do different things so you need to do um you need to record and translate you need to you have you have an audio you can upload it straight up to your microsoft word and you know get a, a what do you call it it's transcribed you can translate it obviously has been reviewing uh, this thing for errors the editor is now more powerful than ever you're able to edit your document for certain errors and uh, the good thing is that uh, the way uh speak to text speech to text is developing is that even your dialectical language or intonations are now being captured so they are doing it better so um prior to now you might say if i'm talking you might not get what i'm saying but now i'm talking i have a uh, what do you call it speech to text going on my screen and essentially it's almost everything that i'm saying and we have things like the author ai which essentially you can use for meetings like this on zoom and any other other ones or even your physical meeting and then it sort of records everything gives you a summary and highlights the most important parts of it um even with chat gpt if you have the appropriate plugin to able to do things like minutes of meeting summary of documents etc uh with chat gpt4 you can upload documents um, you can create pictures it is even with the chat gpt 3.5 if you need to upload the document there are add-ons on your um, browser your chrome browser that allow you to be able to upload documents you know you just add documents to whatsapp or to speak speak uh to chat gpt or any of those ones and if you just check the adults chat gpt you find a lot of them that make chat gpt even a lot easier for you to use as a person uh, to develop now if you need to even go further you can create your own chat gpt there are apps that enable you to either just connect it to your website and then it gathers all the information on your website and then it's able to answer people based on what you have asked based on what you have put in or you can even upload your documents 
So you have instead of having to, you know, you know, a regular chatbot where you know you have only preset data, only a few, some information that you provide for it that is able to answer, and then the rest you say talk to a customer care representative. You have more than that now because once you've uploaded information, it can rethink, it can review from beginning to end and tell you, okay, this is the answer to the question and respond in an almost human way. Um, there is actually quite a lot uh, to think about, but if you want to <laughs> see one, like she said, I'm always posting on my LinkedIn. Yeah. And anytime I see something i'm always posting um there's the help me write they are the ones for uh, excel that helps you with formulas etc to be able to do certain things uh spreadsheets and excel there are lots of it you have a document is in chinese and you need to convert it to english language you go to your google translate you upload the entire document it sends you a version of the document that has the other language and even though it's not a hundred percent the reality is that even if you have somebody talking to you or interpreting it the translation is not a hundred percent i mean one of the most used book in the world is the Bible. And different translations, <coughs> when you read them, they say different right. things. So, but it's as it's as good as can be at the moment. And it's even improving by the day. You know, they are learning different languages. I know that my language now is on Google. So even if you're an Igbo man, a Yoruba man, a reverse man, and you upload your data in that language, you upload it in English or in any other language, you can convert to your language and then you can use it. And this, these are very useful tools. That's Good month. Over to you. That's um, really cool. Wow. This is this is this is this is like an AI class. Like this is this is incredible. I love it. Now let's just let's round off um with something for the lawyers because um I was really going through your profile and honestly, there's going I see a lot of things that I see coming in that are coming into the space now, especially when it comes to how you know the laws have to really guide these things. There's a lot right yes data seems to be the one because there's a lot because of course ai feeds on data but issues as regards dispute resolution right you're going to need to have lawyers that are really really versatile in this space who can be mediators right who can be arbitrators who can be conciliators in this aspect because sometimes even litigators in the because obviously there are going to be issues as regards possibly maybe defamation or whatever that will lead to cases and stuff like that right there are also issues as regards you know protection intellectual property protection um ip how you are able to take your innovation and make sure that that innovation is novel to you and it's so amazing that the way these machine learning models are is that they replicate themselves instantaneously wherever so mm -hmm. you really need to understand how to actually even navigate the legal terrain when it comes to how you're actually integrating AI, because there are lots of legal issues that can that can that can you know arise. We're going to talk about contractual relationships, um, contract with AI developers, vendors, clients, um, the terms of use of your website, the privacy policy notices of your website, the things that you need to put on your website or your web app or your software to ensure that people are genuinely carried along in terms of the updates that are constantly being made to the product. There's just a lot. Of opportunities for lawyers and this question is to the legal practitioners who are watching this and are possibly going to be working with startups that are intending to use ai um give them give us some advice um it doesn't have to be very specific but what are some of the considerations that practitioners need to start paying attention in this space especially when they start interfacing with clients who are trying to use this you know generative models um they're getting into third party contracts with software developers from another country you know what are some of the things that you think that um lawyers or legal practitioners startup advisors should look out for for their clients what are some of the things that they need to start doing um and then i think that will be like my second to the last my or my last question basically and then you can round off with your final thoughts as to emerging legal trends so thank you uh, i think you i think you've answered your question by yourself ah I how no, please, please i am not i have not i think the question but i think one of the most important things with technology now is the knowledge that um it's cross-border so you have a website or you have one thing that you're doing today it will not stop with you it will not stop with you it's not going to stop in nigeria if you're in nigeria uh, you're going to be relating with people in the us people in canada people in the eu people in any of those other places. So because you are going to be relating with these other people, you should have in mind that your contracts or that you should be compliant. You should first of all, so if you are dealing with startups today and you don't have a GDPR knowledge, for example, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are already starting on the wrong foot. You should have looked at the GDPR, relevant portions of the GDPR. Given a lot of it has been enacted 
into our own local law, the uh, NDPA. But the reality is that it's still different. There are still differences, certain differences. So at this point, you should know those. And you should also watch the laws. The laws are changing. I'm sure that in the next year, I mean, I will be pushing anyway for um, further regulation of artificial intelligence, different policies that should come up. So you should know not just the one in your country, the one outside. You should by now you should have been reading um, things like the AI Act. Fortunately, it has like his own websites. AI Act has like his own websites where you can go and review. I think it's AIact.com. I'm not sure, but just Google the AI Act and you'll find it. Um, <coughs> you should have that. Then you should um, know things like law of thoughts, uh, things like uh, law of thoughts generally, including defamation, negligence, or any other form of harm. Um, there are certain laws in Nigeria, for example, the law reform, uh, thoughts law reform act of Lagos. These are really old laws and some of some are common law principles, but then you have to also know those ones for stats. Then you also have to keep following because these regulations are coming by the day. The cyber crime act was recently, uh, this, the trademark act was, uh, reenacted the copyright act. A number of these things are coming in consistently and they're not just coming in Nigeria. <coughs> They are coming across board so again like i said because you're servicing clients internationally you have to know those basic laws and then you have to consistently so one thing i do and which is why i have all the information so if i am following on linkedin on instagram on twitter not on instagram i don't use instagram as much on linkedin and on twitter i'm following all the regulators that i need to follow i'm following all the uh, the top founders in my field the lawyers that i think are in my field so every time uh, they are posting something new that relates to some area, I'm one of the very first people to see it. I'm having conversation, I'm collecting phone numbers, I'm having meetings. There are certain things that are happening and I only get to find out because I was on the panel with the social and social regulator and we had the conversation. But however you can, if you are a lawyer in this field, you have to find a way to connect and get first-hand information. The CBN, if you're in the fintech, CBN is always issuing guidelines and regulations. Um, the... Um, what call it this data uh what's it called what they call this data protection oh forget sorry and the ndpp is going to be issuing regulations on a fairly regular basis you have to be following them you have to be relevant trademarks everybody you know so you have to follow everybody individually if you want to get that information and you want to be up to date um you can be so for example the date for uh compliance with the ndpa was shifted last year it was uh it was was it march and then it was moved upwards last year and you need to know these things um if you're doing evaluation of bots for financial company uh, for finance companies for example um or even those people who are doing insurtech for example the uh nikon would issue a code that says okay this is the format for board evaluation this is the time frame you might do it this week you might do it next week you need to be able to know and how do you know you are following these people unfortunately everybody is on social media now um, everybody almost everybody has a website now uh, so that's the start. And then for, for stats, there's also the need for you to understand what these things are. So what I'd like to do is to deal with things from a, from understanding not just the substantive law itself, but the entire process. What is financial technology about? What is artificial intelligence about? You have to understand it to some extent. Then before you now start doing, you know, understanding things like trademarks, what's a trademark, what's a copyright, you have to understand the basics first. Then before you go on to understand the regulation, what the regu current regulation is. You need to understand these things on the baseline and then from there you now go on to further understanding or knowing the laws and then being able to implement them there are trainings that are ongoing all the time and if you can register in fact not if you can you should you should you should be able to <laughs> do it you should get uh, get to go uh, sorry get yourself learning by the laws as they come review them etc that's it uh rose i don't know if i've answered your question answered thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you this brings us to the last part like there's nothing to add like you've said too much because anybody that listens to this they already know what they have to do so thank you very much fernandez so i think we're going to open the floor now i uh, will be rounding off in the next five minutes um i like to keep this strictly within an hour um do we have questions from the audience i know that you know today is saturday everybody's trying to rest but definitely this recording this is going to be this is definitely going live and um it's going to be recorded so you are definitely going to have access if you need to have more a more detailed um work please reach out to fernandez he's definitely going to answer your questions um you can send him a message send him an email um send him a dm but let's let's see do we have questions from the audience or do we have comments i'm pretty sure that uh, we're definitely so i can see a couple of people on my end okay josephine let me highlight josephine's comment she says thank you 
<laughs> Josephine says, thank you, Fernandez, for sharing the chat GPT privacy hack. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, it's important for us to really just understand. Like you said, there was something very important you said, Fernandez, which is really understand how these programs work. It's not just enough to just, you know, go deeper, go deeper than the regular user. Because, you know, the founders are building, the lawyers have to know what's going on, right? And I really love the fact that legal practitioners now are really, really coming alive to the fact that they cannot keep being a cake in the delivery of their services. It's it's something that, you know, some of us, we we got the memo a long time ago that if we are going to be relevant, we must keep evolving. So thank you, Fernandez. Um, I don't know, there's no question in the comment box, so that means that we are definitely going to be finishing right now. Um, we've talked about legal questions. I have comments. I have you comments. Have comments. They don't have questions. I have comments. I have personal comments. <laughs> okay, please. So for those of us in the dispute resolution field, exactly. Um, whether you're in, whether you're doing AI or not, AI is coming for you. Um, I think you should be afraid. Um, I mean, I'm not just even talking about AGI. I'm saying, for example, now a machine can look at a witness and tell you whether that witness is saying the truth based on you know the pulse, based on how it's sweating, based on the way the eyes are looking, the way the nose is shaped. You know, it has millions of information. And one of the problems with humanity is that I can have all the information and then when I die, you know, we have roughly around 60 to 100 years to live on it. When I die, all of that information, almost all of that information goes away with me. And then and a new person has to learn during my life and I have to also do that. But what computers have is that the information is passed on seamlessly from one to another. So now you have uh, machines that can that have information from back then in Greece, you know, ancient Greece, and they're able to tell you how humans behave when they die and all those things. So they're better able to even judge a cross-examination situation. Now we have AI that can listen to people and give them and respond to them based on what the law and the fact is. These things are not perfect yet, but they are getting more and more perfect as we're talking. So very soon you might have a situation where, particularly for small claims, where uh, you have somebody will just go and speak to an AI and explain his problems. Based on that, the team will ask for that question, what is this, what is this? And then now when he connects the other person, the other person responds, and then he sends the uh, what he considers to be a judgment or a ruling to maybe an umpire, the judge or whoever he is, who may then approve or make some changes as may be required and respond. We may not necessarily have to go to this lengthy um, process of um, litigation for a lot of transactions. And the more um, the better it is, the more people will apply because people are not going to be waiting for the law to, you know, they are going to go to, to private, private individuals are creating, they are creating this as we speak. I'm talking about, like, I was talking about the race for the AGI. If you have the proper AGI, why do you need um, to go to courts to resolve any sort of disputes? Anyway, so we have a situation where the things that we see in sci-fi movies are actually going to be real. And so if you want to stay, if you want to stay relevant and you want to keep your job and you want to keep doing what you're doing, you have to learn, learn these things. You have to learn, you have to be on top of it. You have to know how to apply, get the latest skills, you know, get additional skills that you want to get. That's the one part. Um, the second part of my talk, and Rosemond, I have four minutes. Uh, <laughs> the second part of my talk is um, a story that I, I told Rosemond that I, I want to share, and I shared it on LinkedIn recently, but I'd like people to hear it as much as possible. Um, my journey to where I am has not been straightforward it's been a, an issue of it's been something uh, that has been driven by determination by um looking for information getting using accepting or taking that information and then applying that information on a consistent basis um i of course my parents died when i was 10 and 14 respectively I'm the first son of my family, so I didn't have a lot of money. Nobody gave me. My father was comfortable, but after he died, everything went down the drain. So we were broke. Um, I was broke for the entirety of my university days. Um, so what I would do is, because, again, I was open to learning technology. You know, I would do assignments for people and try to do, you know, different versions. When I had about my class teacher gives me an assignment, I would do like five or six. Because I know eventually when it gets to the last day, somebody wants to simply just add the person's name and then we'll share... The assignment of course that could take you so far you had to do a few odd jobs when i got to lagos i was broke i had twenty thousand naira on me i mean 
Um, and that finished in a few days. I sent CVs to everybody in the world. Network definitely cannot stress us at this point. Wow, that's that's such a story. Wow, that's. <laughs> I'm hoping that Fernandez comes back online. Um, technology, technology, technology. That's what we are even talking about now. So I'm hoping that, you know, he's definitely going to be back. Please just bear with us. Um, I'm sure he's going to definitely pop on back. And I think it's even important for those who are still watching that everybody who seemingly has come to a certain level of growth, right, definitely has a story. And every time... <laughs> Ah, Victoria, it's good to have you here. Thank you for joining in at such a very interesting moment. Um, okay, so Victoria, can you share what you are saying, God forbid, to our definitely love to know? Is it the aspect that Fernandez talked about um dispute resolution or where exactly? Like I need to I need to know, unless possibly um okay. I love I love Salome's so let me let me put Salome's comments. So let's just be taking some comments uh before before Fernandez definitely comes back. I really, really hope he does. I'm sure something abrupt must have happened to his network, but I'm definitely sure he's going to be coming back. Um, thank you, Fernandez, for being simple and explicit. Yes, I gain clarity towards the end, step-by-step -step guide on what to do become more vast. Exactly. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Victoria says this has been an amazing... Yeah, definitely. <laughs> this has been an amazing session. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. Our host is back. Nothing they happen. Please go ahead, sir. <laughs> so we've been getting some very interesting comments. So please go ahead. I'll just share them on the screen as they keep coming. Okay. So um, so I said I, I sent in several job applications. Um, several times. I finished all my money. I borrowed money. I mean, at the time, 5,000 naira was a lot of money. I slept on the street. I ate food. Um, I really did 15 naira dates. The young Nigerian, you know what? He did the 15 naira. How small is that my entire meal for the day? I'll trek long distances, trek for 20 to 30 minutes per day because I want to get to the office. But the, 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 the thing that I had that worked for me and that continues to work for me till date is I read a lot. Um, I like knowledge. I still like knowledge. I read a lot. I look for what I need to get. And I like to read a lot of the how to books, things like how to influence and influence people, think and grow rich, reach that or that, you know, books that help develop the self. And in addition, I book specific to my field and things I want to learn, the soft skills, the more um, technical skills that I need for certain things. So in addition to general knowledge, I also have the soft skills that I've learned from those books. And then I apply them consistently, you know. I decided that even if I was going to, you know, um, Roosevelt was telling me about the people that travel that were going to sleep, uh, that were dying of cold in somewhere in Canada. And I said, for me, I don't think as long as the person is not doing something illegal, I, I don't have a problem with it. For me, it's, it's sometimes you need to take a risk to succeed. And when I tell you all the stories, I came to Lagos in 2017, so it's been six years. Today, as of now, of course, I'm now on leave, but I was before I left, I was a partner in my law firm. And it's not a small law firm. I mean, it's related to most of the law firms. I have over 20 lawyers working there. Um, I'm chairman of the Law and Technology Committee of the, um, uh, the MBA section of uh, legal practice. Um, um, well, and in fact, there are a lot of different organizations are different. I speak at various events. In fact, uh, when I got my most recent appointment, I had to show them my calendar for the month. I have at least two things every week till December, uh, till middle of December. So I think I had to be asking for permission. Please just allow me to attend these events. And so and these events are not, I mean, most of them, they're not all virtual. Most of them are physical events that people ordinarily pay for this year, for the entirety of this year. I don't think I've paid to attend an event. I've been paid to attend this event. You know, things like my, uh, you know, they pay for my movement, they give me additional forms in this. And these things are, can only come from your knowing what you want and telling yourself that you're going to do what you need to get it. An additional thing you need to be able to do and you need to have in the life is you need to be, in addition to being competent, you have to be loyal. Um, and, I, and I cannot stress the value of loyalty. Um, you have to pick out the uh, people that are mentors in your area. You have to create a relationship with them. They have to trust you. You have to trust them. Uh, because mentors tend to open doors for you where you're not there. They are talking about something that relates to you. And you know, obviously, you don't have that level of connection. They know, okay, yes, I know this guy. 
Um, I recently, of course, as was announced, I recently got employed as a special assistant to the president. I never met the president before. I didn't even support him when he was running for his election. And I never met the attorney general before. I never met any of these people. But somebody that knew my work and said, okay, yes, this guy can do the stuff. And of course, they did their background check and they said, okay, this guy is competent. And then they gave me the role. And you know, there was a lot of outcry at the time of my appointment. But that's exactly it. If you're good at what you do and if people trust you enough, they're going to open doors for you. So create relationships, read books. Somebody said, you are the same person you are five years from now as you are today, but for the people you meet and the books you read. So people like Rosemont, for example, that I have met that have opened doors for me. Uh, other people, a lot of other people, I'm happy. Um, and, 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 and then finally, I should end this now, but finally, you need people but you don't need one person. When you meet people, do your best. Don't always come to tell them your problems. Try to find solutions to their problems. Sometimes you don't even know that these problems exist. You collect somebody's number, you know, you are taking information. When is this person's birthday? When is this person's social event? When can I get information like that? You just send it to the person. The person has it at the top of your mind. They are helping you. Um, and a lot of the times, that helps you create relationships with those people. And on the long run, these relationships are what will build you up. I've spoken a bit too much, and it's eight or seven. So thank you all very much. <laughs> that was a beautiful fight. If I, you answer my question before the question, which was one of your final thoughts, thank you for sharing that story. It's such a beautiful story of grass to grace, and it keeps going better. Thank you for the life advice, right? Because, like I said, you are whatever you're doing, you're doing it because there are people, right? We are solving problems for people. Everything that is being created is created for people. So thank you, Fernandez. Um, it's such a privilege to really have you you know um as busy as your schedule is it's 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 just uh, please can we just celebrate uh Fernandez in the comment section if you're still online just say thank you possibly send him a token or two <laughs> because you really need this. <laughs> Moses, Moses Moses says Moses says thank you so yes thank you very much I'm really glad that people you stayed here to this time we are one hour six minutes past and i'm going to say a very big thank you thank you please go ahead go back i'm going to go back and watch this again because i myself have learned a lot right so thank you so much our honorable are you are you is your title honorable now or is it excellency or is it royal and how do they how do they do please, please i'm just fernandez <laughs> you can't run for long sir you can't run, run for long but just, just accept it <laughs> thank you such thank an honor you. thank you so much for for being here with us uh the comments are coming in i love it i love it thank you victoria thank you yemi Uile. thank you niet um thank you daniel oh i love the comments coming in thank you it was so inspirational at the end thank you fine thank you i see you i see you thank you so much have a very very amazing evening everyone share this link um share this link with everyone thank you for you know joining in and tuning in and it will come your way again um i would just want to just give a very short announcement so you know we always have the sessions twice every month it's possibly going to reduce now to once a month so thank you fernandez for being here and have an amazing evening bye so like i said with the uh, with the announcement um we're definitely going to be possibly having it once a month as regards to so that we can really maximize you know the planning and then the content just as we've had a very powerful session in november so definitely one more will happen in december and then we're going to possibly have um our next main physical event next year so please be on the lookout for that and thank you so much everyone for being a part of this session i really learned a lot and i'm very grateful that you know you decided to do this with me have a very beautiful evening everyone thank you rama definitely i'm going to put your comments up thank you very much for really being here i appreciate your time looking forward to you know you having a very beautiful weekend have an amazing time and i wish you all the best goodbye for now bye